In this video, I'm going to show you how to make up a complicated metal pipe like this, showing you how to get the brackets on, how to get the beads on, and how to get the bends in there, and also how to give it the OEM look by powder coating it. And we're going to start off, this particular pipe is from a 1975 Mercedes 280SL. It's no longer available for Mercedes. It's been repaired previously here, brazed, and but it's got holes here after sandblasting, and the ends are in my opinion, it's too ragged to make it worthwhile trying to repair the existing pipe. So this happens to be a 15 millimeter pipe. So we're going to start off with standard 15 mil copper pipe like that. Now, when it comes to cutting copper pipe, what you should do is use a proper ratchet cutter like that. You'll get a straight, straight square cut. If you try and cut with an angle grinder, like I've done there, you'll get a ragged cut and you'll almost never get it square. You'll find that when you use a ratchet cutter like that, it slightly pushes the pipe in and makes the um, internal diameter slightly narrower. It's important for the next phase, which is going to be to put on this bead here. If you go out into the big wide world and try and find a beader for a 50 mil pipe, trust me, you will struggle. There's a company called Earls that makes them for imperial pipes, but I could not find anywhere for a reasonable price that made a beader for 15 mil pipe, so I've made my own. And the way I've done it is on eBay, they sell this tool here for about 10 pounds. And this is a pipe expander. The idea behind this tool is you fit it down a pipe and an aluminum or copper pipe, and then you squeeze together and it'll expand the end of the pipe. And that'll allow you to um, put another pipe on top and get a perfect weld. That's what you need for plumbing, but we don't need that. What we need is just a bead round the top of the pipe like that. So what I've done is I've sent this off to a machine shop and asked them to put this on the lathe and remove a section here, leaving us with this rim here. And now when we insert this into a 15 mil pipe and squeeze out like that and gently go round, what we're gonna end up with is a beautiful bead like that. Now you probably already know this, but these beads are important because when you put the hose clamp on, you're clamping on this side of the bead and it stops the pipe and the slipping off, the rubber pipe slipping off the hose. By my beautiful assistant, she's gonna hold the camera. So the idea of this tool is it just fits in the end of the pipe like this. And then you can adjust exactly where to have the bead depending on how far in you put it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this all the way to the end. Okay, and then I'm gently going to start squeezing and just revolving this round. And you can see that, that is putting a perfect bead in this copper pipe, like so. And then you can either just sand the end off if you don't want the pipe to be that long, or you can cut it off with an angle grinder and you'll get that perfect bead. So you can see how simple it is using this tool here to get a perfect bead every time. There are other ways of getting a bead on there. One of the old school ways would be to weld or solder on a or an olive. Um, but the trouble with soldering is we are going to be getting these pipes uh, powder coated and they go into an oven and that oven will melt the solder. So that's not an option for us. So on to the next problem. We don't have a welder or brazier. So how do you get these brackets on like that? The answer is using a two part epoxy from JB Weld. If you haven't used this stuff before, it's absolutely superb for bonding metal together. You can sand it and it won't break it can withstand heat etc people have actually replaced head gaskets with this drilled holes inside cylinder heads and used jb well to seal them and run lawnmower motors etc so i've done a little test piece here that bracket is not going anywhere and when you watch one of these videos you're watching it with the benefit of experience and hindsight and without all the mistakes that i've made originally i thought i could just use these bare p clamps here cut them off and glue those on but in actual fact they're not thick enough the brackets on here are actually quite thick and they're also wider than the p-clamps and once you drill the hole that big inside this p-clamp it's not going to be secure enough so the metal that i've used is actually from travis perkins it's a joist hanger um 
and that's the right thickness has actually got pre-drilled holes and you can just cut that profile out with an angle grinder by tracing around that with a sharpie. And now for what's probably the most difficult part is how do you get complicated bends into a pipe like this? The way I'm going to do it is using a pipe bender that we picked up from Screwfix. Now this is an Irwin pipe bender. It's one of the best you can get and it comes with these forms here to bending pipes. If you use a former like this, what you will find is you will avoid the problems and the mistakes that many people get. Can you see this pipe here has got all those ridges in it? And that's because it was bent without using a form like that. And what the form does, it allows the rollers to give even pressure all the way along the pipe and you avoid getting ridges. And the trouble with having ridges in a pipe like that, it builds up turbulence in whatever liquid is going through the pipe. In this case, it would be radiator coolant. And eventually that turbulence, just like the bubbles in an ultrasonic cleaner, will eventually cause this pipe to get holes in at that point. Now, if you're like me and you've never done any pipe bending before, it's as well to do a few practice bends on this particular machine the one of the 15 millimeters is the line that you want to line up where the bend starts everything's lined up it's just a matter of pulling this handle down of course i haven't got a camera stander here so i'm going to have to do that off camera so this is our 180 degree bend here you can see that the bend starts just where we marked it at the top there and there's no ridging or rippling at all and no flattening of the pipe. You can see this pipe was already bent here and you can see that they haven't used a form to bend that pipe and that's why you've got all those ripples there. Now it's really important if you're making up a pipe with bends at the end like this pipe that you cut the pipe you're working with much longer than necessary and that's because the pipe has to hook under here and this pipe for example wouldn't be long enough to hook under there so we're going to have to chop the end off here now there's three bends in this pipe so we've done we've made the first bend and next bend you need to do is this one here and not that one so this bend pipe is going to be much longer than we require then we're going to put that bend in hopefully it's extremely difficult to do bends by eye and what you can use is one of these profilers here this is just one we picked up at tool station from vitrex and it allows you to exactly get the profile of that there measures up to the pipe that we want to do and we can compare that with our first bend see our first bend is just a little bit too shallow we just need to bend that a tiny bit it's looking about as good as we're going to get very difficult to get the angles exact but that's just about it for that end it's bend. really tricky to get this next bend right because this pipe goes down and off to an angle i think that's about it but only time will tell it's really important to remember you if you over bend the pipe, you can't bend it back again. So I'm just doing tiny little increments. This here is our second bend. We just bent this pipe slightly, but you can see we've still got a little way to go. Second bend and you can see we've still got a little bit more to go. We've just got a tiny fraction more to go. The last bend, I've got it marked there. It's pretty much lined up. I kind of have to do it by eye slightly, but as I say, that's a really difficult bend because it's bent in three different dimensions with three different angles but we'll give it a go the moment of truth Let's see how we got on okay i'm pleased at how that has come out i've just cut this slightly longer than this pipe because i imagine that there used to be end bits on this pipe plus when we put our um, bead on there it's easier to put a bead slightly further in on the tool that we've made so next thing we're going to do is run a drill inside both ends of there get rid of the inside burr and then we will put that bead on using our beading tool i'm going to put the bead on there and i'm just going to keep that out about that far and that should put the bead just about where my thumbnail is went on there perfectly with the little tool we made up it just remains to be seen if that slots over beautifully it does so i'm happy with what we've done so far it just remains to attach that bracket now send this off to the sandblasters and powder coaters and that will be job done now to make this little bracket here we're going to use one of these l brackets from travis perkins they're the right thickness oh that's hot and we just cut out the shape and the profile there with an angle grinder. This has been gluing overnight. We mixed up two-part JB Weld. I didn't quite cut the bracket 
properly. So I'm just gonna have to sand that off with our little finger file, that sharp edge there. But um, we'll leave that on until we take this to the powder coaters and hopefully that will come back looking like new. Just one day after dropping this off at the powder coaters, we've got it back. And I think you would be hard pushed to know that that is not an original pipe. Let's just have a quick look and see what else we got back from the powder coaters. This here is the tensioner pulley bracket for the air conditioners. It's been powder coated in um, matte semi-gloss. It's a really beautiful finish. That all fits together like so. What we may just do is recut the threads on this and in there um, and that'll be ready to go back on the car. Here is the bracket upon which our header tank sits like so <clears throat> you can see that it is it was pretty rusty when we took it off but once again powder coated that'll last another 50 years so yeah that bracket looks a million times better than it did before we've just loose fitted that with new stainless steel fittings and then we have got the battery tray which i'm not sure this doesn't look like an sl battery tray to me but it fits the car so maybe the early sls had a different battery tray on them it's not something you'll ever see but once again, this was starting to rust, but with that powder coating finish on there, that should last another 50 years, we hope. That's that battery tray in. If anyone's got an older SL, maybe they can tell me if that is in fact the right battery tray. I've never seen one like that, but stranger things have happened. It's all very well having shiny new parts. The real question is, does it fit? And the answer is yes. Looks like we got those curves bang on. The pulley fits just over there. Right. So, also powder coated, and this car is starting to look really nice, but we still have a ways to go. I think in the next video, I'm going to have a go at just whipping out this radiator, taking off the fan here so that I can um, put a new bolt in there, and then putting the radiator system back together, the air cooling system back together, and having another go at starting this car with some coolant in it. We bought the tool that we converted into a beater from eBay, it cost us £9.51 delivered and arrived about a week after we bought it. And um, we bought it from these guys here, Hobby Store. Bought the pipe bender from Screwfix, the Irwin pipe bender. Now that's not the cheapest pipe bender, you can get them for half that price, but having read the reviews, the cheaper pipe benders aren't as accurate. And if you're dealing with really small pipes and you've got to get those bends really accurate, you want a good quality machine. We're only going to buy it once, so my philosophy is always buy the best you can afford. And if you're on a budget, just pop over to eBay and you can generally pick one of these up for less than £80. We used a two-part JB Weld to attach the bracket to the pipe. Obviously, if you had the ability to braze pipes or even weld steel to copper, that would be a much better solution than using glue. We get all our sandblasting and powder coating done at RPA Engineering based in Bristol. They are great for classic car parts and a whole variety of other things as well.